Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous. On Tuesday, September 13th, a 22-year-old Kurdish woman, Masa Amini, came out of a subway station in central Tehran, walked through a park, and in that park was arrested by Iran's moral security police. The morality policemen bundled her into their standard white and green morality patrol van, and according to Amini's family, they beat her. The police deny this. But there is one incontrovertible fact. After three days of what the police call training in hijab rules, the moral security police sent Amini to a hospital where she died at the age of 22. What was Masa Amini's offense? Wearing her burqa, her headpiece, so loosely that you could actually see a bit of her hair. The day of Masa Amini's death, protests erupted on Iranian university campuses and in 80 Iranian cities. Yes, 80. Those protests continued two weeks later and showed no signs of stopping. The protesters chant, we don't want the Islamic Republic and death to the dictator. In other words, they want freedom from Iran's religious totalitarianism. They want a different form of government. To stop the protests, the Iranian government is using tear gas, whips, and clubs, and has shut down the internet. At least 14 protesters have died. But according to England's Financial Times, people from across the Iranian political spectrum have called for an end to the official policing of women's clothing. How in the world did this all begin? In 1979, there was a revolution in Iran. The Iranians drove out their ruler of 38 years, their Shah, who they hated for his savak, his secret police. The secular parties rejoiced. They were sure that they had won the revolution. They were wrong. A fire-breathing Orthodox Muslim super scholar, the Ayatollah Khomeini, outmaneuvered the seculars, stole their revolution, and set up a secret police that killed far more Iranians than the hated Shah's Savak. The Ayatollah's religious dictatorship set up a morality place, which came to be known in 2006 as the Moral Security Police. And that Moral Security Police insisted on making women second-class citizens, demanding that they wear a hijab, that totally covers their hair, and that they not sing or dance in public or on the internet, and that they submit to what Amnesty International describes as discrimination in law and practice in relation to marriage and divorce, inheritance, child custody, nationality, and international travel. But the time may be ripe for a feminist revolution in all 56 nations, of the Muslim world. Believe it or not, there are firm roots for feminism in Islam. Those roots are in the relationship Muhammad had with his first wife, Khadijah. Khadijah was the most successful business person in Muhammad's hometown, Mecca. It was said that she was worth more than all the men of Muhammad's tribe combined. Her field was long-distance cargo transport. She had more than 80,000 camels. She sent camel caravans from Yemen, where they could pick up goods from Africa, to Syria on the Mediterranean coast. Khadijah was 40 years old. She spotted promise in a young man 17 years younger than she was. So she sent him on one of her caravans to Syria and had him collect the Syrian customer's payment. And she gave Muhammad one of her slaves to help him out and to keep an eye on him. When the caravan returned to Mecca, her spy told her that unlike most money collectors, Muhammad had not skimmed any off. He had not stolen a single grain of gold for himself. So she proposed to him. 
In other words, Khadijah was more than Muhammad's equal. In fact, she became his backer. That example of female equality is missing from the 56 nations of the Muslim world, and the time may have come for its resurrection. This is Howard Bloom speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make, or <laughs> I don't know why, ask how. <laughs>